Metrology, the science of measurement and quantitative comparison, is one of the most fascinating and fundamental areas of science. It's in the background, behind the scenes, but without it nothing would work. Metrology is the source of all the units and scales that we use to measure the world around us. With the help of the Open University and the National Physical Laboratory, these short programmes examine the seven SI base units from which all other units can be derived. The kilogram, the meter, the second, the kelvin, the ampere, the candela, and, in this episode, the mole. The mole is the amount of substance of a system which contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in 0.012 kilograms of carbon-12. When the mole is used, the elementary entities must be specified and may be atoms, molecules, ions, electrons, other particles or specified groups of such particles. There are many occasions in science where we need to re refer to the amount of a particular substance we have. A good example is in chemistry. We know that in chemistry, atoms and molecules react together in whole numbers. So for example, two molecules of hydrogen will react with one molecule of oxygen to make two molecules of water. But if we do that experiment in the lab and weigh the hydrogen, the oxygen and the water, we won't find that the masses are in the ratio 2 to 1 to 2. So that's why we use the quantity amount of substance for which the unit is the mole. Because when we do that reaction, two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to make two mole of water. We actually use the quantity amount of substance uh, more than we might realise. For example, when we talk about the composition of the atmosphere, we sometimes say that there are 380 parts per million, or ppm, of carbon dioxide. When we say that, what we mean is that there are 380 molecules of carbon dioxide for every one million molecules in the atmosphere. We could say the same thing in moles. We could say that there are 380 moles of carbon dioxide in every one million moles of the atmosphere. The mole is very closely linked to the Avogadro constant. In the definition of the mole, we know that 12 grams of the pure material carbon-12 contains one mole of carbon-12 atoms. We're able to determine the number uh, of atoms that, it, that are involved in one mole from a range of different experiments in physics. And that's what we now call the Avogadro number or the Avogadro constant if it's expressed in terms of per mole. And that number is 6.022141719 times 10 to the 23. The reason it's called the Avogadro constant is actually not because it was invented by Avogadro. Avogadro was an Italian chemist who first put forward the hypothesis that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. So it was a very, very important idea on the way to our modern understanding of amount of substance. Then at the beginning of the 20th century, uh, when the idea of the Avogadro constant emerged from various experiments in physics, it was suggested that this Avogadro constant should be named after Avogadro. The reason the, definition, the current definition of the mole is the way it is, is because the mole has always been a very practical way for chemists and scientists to work out how much of a given substance they have. And since substances are almost always weighed, we have a definition that works in terms of weight. The mole was used in this practical way a long time before we knew with any reasonable precision how many entities there are in a mole. Avogadro's number is enormous. It's often difficult to understand just how big numbers like this are. 
So I've got an example here. This one litre laboratory bottle, if we divided it up into Avogadro's number of small volumes, each of those small volumes would be one nanometer by one nanometer by one nanometer. So each of those volumes would be about 1,000 or 10,000 times too small to see with our laboratory microscopes. That's how many there would be in here if we divided it up Avogadro's number of times. Here's another example. If we take the volume of this small football, if we had Avogadro's number of these small footballs, they would have a volume that's very close to the volume of the Earth. That's just how big Avogadro's number is. So when we use the mole in practical work, it's absolutely essential that we state what it is we're talking about. For example, if we're talking about a mole of sulphur, we need to state whether we're talking about a mole of sulphur atoms or a mole, perhaps, of sulphur-8 molecules. We're able to use the mole with any kind of entity. The definition emphasises this. But it's absolutely essential that we state what the entity is when we use it. There are now proposals to redefine several of the base units of the SI. And perhaps one of them that might be redefined is the mole. The reason for this is we now know with good accuracy the number of entities in a mole of substance. So perhaps it would be more logical to have a definition that was based on the number of entities rather than the mass of a mole. It wouldn't affect the way we do chemistry in practice but it would make for a definition that was more consistent with the other definitions of the base units of the SI.